This recollection of E.T. Is, is 20 years have transpired, so it's difficult to remember precisely first impression. But we had done just on Jaws and Close Encounters, and I think maybe the first Raider film. And E.T. seemed wonderful to me when I saw it. I think Stephen was a little bit worried about it because E.T., he's not really beautiful. He's an odd-looking little creature, you know. And I remember Stephen saying, do you think the public will embrace this creature? And I don't think any of us really knew. You never can tell exactly how people will react. I don't think the expectations would ever compare to what the results were. In the sense, it was like Star Wars in the same way, which when we saw, had Star Wars, we thought, well, it'd be a very good weekend movie for children. And the same thing with E.T. I think, well, we'll be successful, but not to become, I think, the number one film. And people embrace it, and now I guess it's fair to say it's a classic, really. I think once we saw it with an audience, you could tell that this emotional connection was made between the children, E.T., all of it, and the audience. I don't think we're ever really, really worried about it, but I think the surprise was that it was as successful as it became. So, we could have a little kind of windy thing well, before the cut, which would lead the, the cut. Well, it? that's why E.T. turns... If the, if the when John Williams saw E.T., you know, he was really happy with the film. And I can tell when John's happy with the film because we don't have a lot of musical discussions. You know, he already has themes running through his, his mind. Just so you know, we added a lot of stars at the beginning of the movie before it, the camera pans down to the forest. And I remember that I left him alone, and one day he called me, he said, I want to play you some of the stuff on the piano. I remember him coming to my office at that time when I played him some themes for E.T., two themes, the main flying theme and the secondary theme. And I'm pleased to say I remember him liking them immediately. Dun, 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 dun. And we eventually get into this key with this one. I loved it. It was great. And I could not wait for the scoring session. I could not wait for the day he scored. Measure three. One, two. I think with E.T., the, the experience was typical of what, what we would do. Once we would accept that we have the right thematic material, then the discussion becomes more rhythmic. When the pace is accelerating, when it's slowing down, when it's going to expand into something big. Of course, when the bicycle goes off the mountain, it becomes a, a luft, a, a big musical moment. A lot of the details in our discussions are mostly having to do with which cuts have accents, which cuts don't have accents. Maybe we don't have accent for this cut, this cut, this cut, in preparation for finally the one that will have some significant thing musically. And Stephen's very interested in all those details and comes over and he will look and we chat and talk. And much of it, the focus comes on the day when we record. And the boom should be when the body when falls. The body falls, right. <laughs> the end part of that film, beginning with the bicycle chase, as the, the little boys are trying to take E.T. back to the mothership and escape the police and get him safely back. About 10, maybe 15 minutes of very difficult music, all of it planned to catch all of these sync points, these points of accent. We have the bicycle achieving escape velocity and finally very sentimental dialogue at the end when E.T. says, I'll be right here, goodbye. And a fanfare when the spaceship goes up. And another fanfare when it turns left. And I was having a very difficult time with the orchestra trying, I would make maybe 
a good take for the first five, but maybe off the next two cues and then on further cues. It's a question of what feels right if, it, if the fiddle's sore enough. But I remember it so well, Stephen coming out to the podium and saying, I will take the f film off the screen so you can just play the music with the orchestra and with its natural phrasing, the way it ebbs and flows in its own way, and then conform the, f the film to what is the best musical performance of that thing. Very unusual. We usually have to slavishly phrase the music to the cuts of the film. When we had the musical performance we felt gave us the most lift and the most sense of exultation at the end of the film, Stephen then laid the music track against the film and made a few editorial adjustments to conform to the music. And I think part of the reason the end of the film has such a kind of operatic sense of completion, real emotional satisfaction as well as satisfaction from what we see, may be partly the result of this wedding of the musical accents with Stephen's film editing. Oboe's instruments that play ta 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 accent two and three, please. So we have more rhythm. Try to concentrate. Don't be trying to be disturbed by Stephen's. Filming. It's like having a, a, a camera in your bathroom, you know, when you're taking a shower, you know. I'd like to stay glad I'm dressed. Always working with Stephen is a kind of opportunity for musical storytelling, so to speak. His subjects and his way of directing are very compatible with a sense of musical development. In E.T., for example, in the beginning of the film, where the aliens seem threatening and ominous, they are unseen and we are unsure of them and so on. <laughs> and the music evolves and, and morphs itself, so to speak, into something that's loving and familiar and finally almost familial in the sense of the little boys and the creature of E.T that it becomes almost a kind of love theme between the two of them. We may have the first few notes of, of this emotional theme suggested early on, then three or four more notes, then finally the whole theme. So that finally, when you hear it all, there's something vaguely familiar about it. You've been prepared for four reels to actually hear this melody. It isn't presented to you immediately in its complete form. There's a suggestion here. It's done a little bit frighteningly over here with a little uncertainty there and finally expressed harmonically or intervallically in some way that you feel comfortable with it. All right. <clears throat> Orchestra, would you play this accompaniment at measure three, please? I have received five Oscars and people say, well, don't you get tired of such a thing? And I, I think it's a basic human thing that none of us ever get tired of being appreciated. We never feel that we've done our best work yet. We always, I think, hope to do the next one better. So I think when you get a pat on the back or someone doffs their head to your, your office and award, it's certainly gratifying. It never becomes a blasé thing. And it, at least in my personality, it makes me think, ah, maybe the next time I can do even better one, you know.